Katie, Rebecca from YCT. Um, first thing when I came here is I could smell fresh paint. Katie, why have you got fresh paint and why is that significant? You definitely can smell fresh paint. So we've just currently reorganised our whole building. We've done a renovation. We've put This is a brand new wall that's gone up. Um, and that's to allow us to create an extra space for play therapy. So we've seen a massive rise in demand on play therapy over the last four years. So our current play therapy room is used to its absolute capacity. So we've created a whole other play therapy room so that we can double what we're doing. And for the uninitiated, so to speak, who is, who is getting play therapy? So play therapy is for children and young people who are aged between 5 and 11, sometimes a little bit older if maybe they have some learning needs or some neurodiversity, uh, but generally 5 to 11 year olds. And I hate to use, this is a crude term which either one of you can answer, is, are, are you a, a growth industry? Well, I guess yes, you know, if you kind of look at the absolute um, understanding of that term, because, you know, referrals for play therapy in the last four years have gone up 173%. So, you know, that's growth, isn't it? It's growth that you don't want to see. But I guess the answer is demand has gone up massively across the whole service, but in particular play therapy. I think largely because there's not too many people providing play therapy. And as our services are free to the families and to the young people, um, not many people are doing that, so yes. Yeah, I think it's a growth industry in terms of demand, but maybe not a growth industry in terms of funding levels. <laughs> yeah, good point. And so how, how do you solve a problem like that? <laughs> well, um, applying for sort of external grants, that's a good way of doing it. Having local people fundraise for us, um, that's also a great way. We have some people uh, walking the three peaks for us at the end of May. Um, so something like the Three Peaks Challenge, which we will focus on on, on your Harlow in May, is is how uh, how much money do you hope to make out of something like that? Well, the thing is, absolutely anything helps. Yes. yes. So because you know, with play therapy, there's lots of consumables, so we go through an alarming amount of glitter and glue <laughs> and paint and paper. So actually, even people who can donate five pounds, that makes a difference. Absolutely. So of course, play therapy is expensive to deliver because it takes professional, qualified, experienced people. Um, and largely our play therapy is funded by um, the East Hearts and West Sussex Integrated Care Board. So that is who pays for most of our play therapy. But as a charity, we want to better double what we're doing. So anything helps. So really the answer is as much as possible. Rebecca, how long have you been working here? Only since November. So a, a relatively short time. What are, this is not an exam. I know you went to pass, Moz, <laughs> but um, 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 what have you learned so far? Oh gosh, everything. Um, I am shocked at the world of charity, um, how underfunded it is. Um, similarly, with the world of uh, mental health services, so underfunded, so oversubscribed. Um, but you no went to a school. Same. No day is the same. Sorry, I interrupt. No but you went to a school where mental health is 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 focused upon, isn't it? In, in, you know, every, and that's what was in their recent Ofsted. And so it's important from school life that primary life, secondary life, that there is, there are avenues, there are opportunities within the school and also outside the school. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I went to Passmore's and even when I was at school, the um, support that was provided for mental health um, was amazing. And then sort of, I have a little brother who's, who's 18 and even in his time, you know, I'm then seeing it improve and they're trying to meet demand. Um, but as we've sort of discussed, Schools are also underfunded, and so it's it's just a really vicious circle at the moment, um, and we're trying to do our best to get ourselves out of it. I think something else that's important as well is that some children don't like to access counselling in school. Mm -hmm. It's really important that it's there because lots will. But for some, there's, there is still some stigma, and actually being able to come outside of school and not have to tell all your friends that you need support. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that there is that balance in Harlow, and, and largely most of the schools, I think, do have mental support, mental health support on site. Um, but also we offer that alternative. Mm -hmm. But there's not too many offering play therapy and that's why I think that there's much more demand for the little ones. What do you hope the little ones and their parents, uh, guardians, would get out of play therapy? Well, we've got some excellent quotes that we always put everywhere on our leaflets and, you know, one that always springs to mind is somebody who said we kind of gave our child back because our child had kind of lost their sparkle. I think ultimately what we hope that we will do, if nothing else, is just sow the seed that actually it's okay to have all these emotions. You know, it's a really overwhelming world at times and, and even more so for younger children. And I think what play therapy does is provide that space to help children learn how to regulate those emotions. 
and, and normalise them because we are supposed to have all the emotions, we're just not supposed to be so overwhelmed all the time. And we just hope that um, families and children get a positive experience of that there is support available and things aren't hopeless because it can feel a little bit like that sometimes. But are you both positive for the future? <laughs> <laughs> I ask it again. <laughs> Um, yes, I think we have to remain positive, otherwise we would also crumble. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you what I feel positive about. I feel positive that, um, you know, I had not heard of YCT six years ago, mm -hmm. but I'm so proud of everything we do. And what I feel really positive about is that there is a service like this, Absolutely. that the people of Hollow do have access mm -hmm. to free counselling. Absolutely, and we're growing and diversifying to meet demand. Um, that's what makes me feel hopeful, because actually it can feel hopeless out there. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously Rebecca's a lot younger than me, but I think that just in the time between our generations, the difference of what young people have to kind of understand and deal with is phenomenal. But then also the awareness, you know, so um, between generations, I mean, our generation is doing its best to sort of raise awareness of mental health issues, and I guess that's a step in the right direction. And does that help somebody, I haven't asked you how old you are, or either 25. one? 25. Is it help, 25, that you're, you can give you input from your generation? Yeah. And that's important. Indeed, a 15-year-old might come to you and say, well, this is how our generation is. Absolutely, yeah. And I think it's really important to know how different it is um, throughout the generations, and then how we sort of manage that, and how we um, address the need in that way. Um, I think as well, so I do the communications here and it's good having somebody who is 25 and who sort of can look at trends and, and tie it all in. Um, so yeah, I do think my age helps. A positive future, but you need help and need support. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely.